All of these boots feature double row stitch down construction. They're made on the 55 last. They're some of the toughest work boots that you can buy today. The only difference is that one of them costs half as much as the others. Welcome, I'm Carl Morawski, and this is the channel that helps you own better, look better, and live better. All right, let's get these out of here because this is the one we're talking about today. Check these bad boys out. So, a long time ago, well, really not that long ago, about five years ago, I was sitting in my truck at lunch looking for a pair of work boots that wouldn't make me ache at the end of my shift. At that time, I think I was wearing a pair of Timberland Pros, and I was in absolute agony by the end of my, uh, my shift when I'd go home, and it was like, I couldn't wait to get these damn things off. So I'm sitting there, and I'm scrolling around on the internet, and if you look on the internet long enough, you're eventually going to find yourself at one of the Pacific Northwest bootmakers. When you're looking for the best work boots money can buy, people will typically mention Whites, Westco, Nicks, you know, the, the brands that you probably know well. And it was a big ask to go home and tell my wife, hey, you know, I'm thinking of spending $500 plus dollars on a pair of work boots, double the amount that I have ever spent on work boots. And of course I had to tell her all this stuff about, well, eventually it'll be cheaper because I can have them resold, they'll last a lot longer. And to be fair, since then I have been wearing those boots. They are ready for a resole. They have been excellent. They've certainly paid me back. They've been a worthwhile investment. These are the boots we're talking about right here. These are the Drew's Logger boots. They cost half as much as the rest and they're fantastic. Now, full transparency, Drew's did send me this pair of boots for review. However, my opinions are my own. They don't get to see this video before it goes live or have any kind of editorial input. So there you go. Now you may be looking at this boot and thinking to yourself, that's just another logger boot. I've seen this same boot from at least five different Pacific Northwest brands. What makes this one any different? Why do we need another logger boot? Well, the truth is that Drew's has actually been around for a long time, since 1918. They were bought by the Baker family of Baker's Shoes in 2011. So it's still a family owned company and they don't compromise at all. These things, they it seems like they took a lot of the knowledge that they've had from working with these other great boot brands and have incorporated it into this with a few little tricks. So while on the outside, they certainly have that old familiar look, a lot of the stuff that goes into making this boot is very unique and different. So we're gonna get into that. So when I first saw these boots, I thought, okay, but where is Drew's cutting costs to offer this boot for about 350 bucks? They, they've gotta be cutting it somewhere. Is it in the components? And Drew's is actually kind enough to send me over a bunch of the components that go into the inside of this boot so that I don't have to destroy them in order to show you what makes them up. So we have a vegetable tanned leather heel counter, toe box, midsole, and insole, along with a veg tanned leather shank. Now cork filler is used between the insole and the midsole for insulation and sometimes leather on leather can make a squeaking sound without this or some other kind of insulating material. The reason leather components make for a better boot is that leather will conform to your feet with wear. A little heat, a little moisture, and a little pressure is all it takes to mold these components to your foot shape. And since they'll move and conform, there won't be any hot spots or discomfort caused by a cheap piece of plastic rubbing against your pinky toe. Now I wanna show you one more component that goes into making up these boots, and that's this pre-molded insole. So this here is thick veg tanned leather, and this they actually put this on the bottom of a shoe last for 48 hours and mold it to the bottom of that, that last. Now what this does, the reason it takes so long is that if they use too much pressure, it would compress the leather, which is actually not what you want. You want your foot to do that so that your foot is what creates the, the, like, the customized fit, right? So it takes 48 hours with lower pressure to make this thing actually conform to this shape here. What it basically does is it speeds up the breaking in process because a lot of times when this is flat, it takes a long time to conform flat leather to your foot if this was a flat insole. So this pre-molded insole is an industry first and something that I've never seen before. Very, very cool. And I'll tell you a little bit more about my break-in experience a bit later. The uppers are seven and a half to eight ounce full grain American hides. And on my pair, the vamp and the heel counter are rough out for abrasion resistance while the upper is smooth. While the boot shape is based on the classic 55 last, Drew's improved upon it in a few ways. They made the last a bit wider to accommodate those of us with wider feet. And they made the instep, which is the top part of your foot, higher. This area in particular has been a trouble spot for me, and I usually have to be very careful how I lace up my boots. These changes are a very welcome improvement and absolutely noticeable when you wear them. The back strap is one piece and diamond stitched, which might not sound like a big deal until you pull off the boot loop on your boots. 
They used T138 bonded thread for the upper stitching, USA made iron nails for the heel, and Italian steel nails for the midsole. They're attached to the classic Vibram 100 lug sole using double row stitch down construction as you'd expect, but you'll notice that there's only one row of stitching visible penetrating the sole, and that's because the inner row goes through the midsole and doesn't penetrate the outsole. The design intent is that as the thread is worn away with time and use, the boot will stay intact no matter what. Since all the boot components are similar, if not the same, as the big legacy brands, and the build quality is comparable with the best of them, I had to ask how they're making these for $200 less. And the answer is simple, labor savings. These boots are made in Leon, Mexico, which is known as the boot capital of the world. It's an area which is steeped in shoemaking history and possesses all the machinery, and more importantly, the labor force to build some amazing boots. Now, to be honest, at first I was a bit skeptical about the idea of building a Pacific Northwest style boot in Mexico, but the results speak for themselves. These things don't give an inch to the big guys. I've been wearing these boots for about two months now, not this pair here, the brown ones that I've been showing you, and I'd like to kind of compare and contrast it with the first Pacific Northwest boot that I ever tried because that was sort of an experience. The break-in on those took about a month to two months to become really, really comfortable. In the beginning, I would actually bring my other pair of boots and swap out at lunchtime because let's face it, there's a lot of leather in this style of boot, a lot of very thick leather, and it takes a long time, no matter how well it's made, to bend and start becoming soft. So usually it, it would take me about a month to a month and a half, maybe on the high end two months to get a pair of boots like this, really broken in and feeling comfortable. These actually took a lot shorter. I'd say that within two weeks, they were very comfortable. At the end of a month, the area that really sticks around for me is right on the inside of the ankle, that area where your ankle bone kind of sticks out. I noticed that when I'm crouching down or something like that, uh, that usually tends to be a pain point. It took about a month for that to really soften up and they've just gotten better and better. So I would say that this pre-molded insole, if that's what's to thank for uh, the accelerated break-in experience, then it's working like a charm. All of the rest of it feels just like my other boots that are of similar build quality. You have that same feeling of solid footing when you're, when you're standing in them. When you're kicking a shovel, you have a nice amount of cushion between you and the back of that shovel. When you're climbing a ladder, that's one of the things that I like about higher heel boots and loggers work really well for this is that rungs sit really nicely in there. And so depending on how high, how high up you are when you're working, if you do work on a ladder like that, it's nice to feel that you're really locked in. A lot of times wedge soles, which being you know flat on the top, you kind of don't know if you're gonna slip off. And as electricians, a lot of times we're sitting there and we're working overhead with both of our hands and it's nice to have your feet locked into the ladder that you're standing on. Uh, but other kinds of work as well. I mean, the, the, there's no lack of traction. This is the classic sole that you've seen on basically every boot, every decent work boot. This thing is not giving up traction for anything. And they just, out, they operate just the way you would expect, which is pretty damn flawless. Now, if I had to find something I didn't like because no boot is perfect, I would have preferred that instead of going all the way up with the speed hooks, I would have preferred like an eyelet at the top here because sometimes what I'll do is by the time I'm done lacing it up, I like to put it through those eyelets. That way I know that the top isn't going to get spun off. And a lot of times, if you've ever done this, if you're ever going up an A-frame ladder, there are definitely times where you'll catch a speed hook on the edge of the uh, the little aluminum piece there of the step. And sometimes that that's enough to, to pull the, the lace right off. Once one lace comes off, it's not much for it to just become unlaced and then you're sitting up there with no laces. So I would have preferred if they put an eyelet at the top so I could really lock them in. Um, that's one small complaint, I know, but it is a complaint nonetheless. When you look at the details though, when you look at the stitching and the quality and everything, nice, cleanly stitch, even the areas where it gets a little complex, which is sometimes where you can tell. Often if you wanna see holes in the, um, you know, so to speak, in the stitching of a boot, you look at the radius. You look where they have to go around a corner. A lot of times, even on the back stay here, where you have that sort of V stitching, is it even? Is it nice and symmetrical? Those are the kind of things that you look at when, when you look at a boot and how well it's made, especially you know when you're looking at more than just durability. And they've done a great job with these. Now, I did notice one little flaw on my brown pair of boots on the inside here with the double row stitch down. Um, you can actually see one of the stitches went a little bit long, almost like it missed a hole. So it went over that hole into the next one. It's a minor flaw. I don't think it'll affect the durability one bit. 
aesthetically, it doesn't bother me and I don't think it would bother most people. And that was really when I was getting in here with a magnifying glass to like look at every little stitch to make sure that they were on par, that I don't make a bad recommendation. So that was the only thing that I could find. Other than that, these things are, are near the top of the, the finishing that I've come to expect from Pacific Northwest boots, although these are made in Mexico. Now, hopefully they can keep that QC up. You know, sometimes I wonder if I get a pair of boots, do they know it's coming to me and that it's going to be on camera and that you're gonna be seeing it? So they wanna put their best foot forward, so to speak. That is a concern of mine in making sure that I give you the most accurate information. However, what I see here is very, very good. And as long as they can keep that quality level up there, I think they got a winner on their hands here. Now, the reason I'm so excited about these boots is that I've been doing boot reviews for a long time, since about 2016. And every time I talk about an expensive pair of work boots, I inevitably get comments of people saying, look, I, I, that, those are great and everything, but I can't afford that. That's just too much money. Uh, I'm a working guy or a girl, and I just can't afford five, $600 boots. It's just out of the, out of the, off the table for me. These at round about 350 bucks make this level of work boot available to the average working person. Most of us are used to spending, I think my budget was like, if I could spend around 300 bucks on my work boots, that's probably good. Red Wings will be a little bit more than 300. Sometimes, you know, Chippewas will be a little bit less, but we're at about 300 bucks. 350 bucks is right there, especially with inflation. So you get this level of durability. Now, you know, this is not what you need for every single job, but holy moly, uh, it's, it's definitely overbuilt for most. And you can get into a pair of these for 350 bucks. So the winners here are the men and women who are working in the trenches every single day. You know, if you couldn't afford a pair of five or $600 boots before, now you can. These are a gateway drug of sorts. So the other complaint, and the thing that I am certainly not uh, unaware of is that a pair of boots like this is taking a Pacific Northwest style and then making it in Mexico, right? So is this going to hurt some of the other bigger brands that are out there? I don't think so. And the reason I'll, I'll tell you is that most people I know who have a pair of whites also own a pair of Knicks, a pair of Westco, uh, a pair of JKs, a pair of Franks. And because they wanna try all the different ones, you know, this is kind of an obsession when you start getting into it. I think that once people buy these and they're illuminated to the benefits of having this level of footwear while at work, they're gonna go, huh, well, I wonder what NYX is up to. I wonder what White's is up to. I wonder what Westco is up to. And then they're gonna try those different uh, styles and different brands and just figure out which one they like. Most people I know have a pair from almost all of those companies. So I think this here is the gateway drug of uh, Pacific Northwest boots. That's, that's what I see them as. And if you wanna see the first time that I experienced a pair of boots like this, go ahead and check out this video right here because in that video, I tell you about all the pains and agony of breaking in, trying to tame a horse like this, you know? I mean, these things, they don't wanna to bend to your will at all. But once you put that work in, they really, uh, they really do. And actually, I'm so glad that they kind of sped up the process with some of the things and the considerations they put in here with the larger last, with the pre-molded insole. Um, you're gonna have a pair of boots that you can have for the rest of your life. And if that's the aim, uh, this is an absolutely great option. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you later.